Hey everyone, in this video we will look into Mutation Observer Web API in JavaScript. In simple terms, it is a web API provided by modern browser for detecting changes in the DOM. Using a Mutation Observer is pretty easy. First we need to create an instance of Mutation Observer. The next thing we need to do is pass it a callback function like this. This callback function will be executed every time a mutation or a change has occurred in the DOM. Next thing we need to do is uh, use the observe method provided by mutation observer. It will take two arguments, target node, the DOM element and the observer options specifying uh, what exactly we are looking for in the DOM. We can also use the disconnect method anytime we want to stop observing for the changes in the DOM. But the real question is why exactly do we need mutation observer for? We can understand it with the help of an example. So, uh, without wasting your time, let's go to an example. So what we have here is a very basic HTML page. So let's assume we are using a library called anime.js and uh, all this library does is take some random anime from this array, random anime list and after an interval of 2 seconds, is it add that particular anime to the DOM and after that, the next 2 seconds, it remove it from the DOM. So as you can see, after 2 seconds, a random anime name is added to the DOM and after 2 seconds, it is also removed from there. So what we exactly want to know is uh, what was the exact name of the anime or what was the exact element that was added in the DOM. For example, if we just use simple console log here uh, using the query selector, we will always get null here. The reason behind is because uh, our library uh, which we are using anime.js is taking up to 2 seconds to insert that element to the DOM but uh, we were accessing it before even it uh, is entered in the DOM. That is the issue why we are getting null every time. So after every 2 seconds uh, it added the element to the DOM but we are accessing right away. But uh, the element is not available right away. That is why and that is why we are getting null every time. Now one way to fix this problem is, used, uh, is to use a set timeout. We can use a callback function and after 2 seconds we can just pick uh, this console.log and put it inside this set timeout. So after this 2 seconds the set timeout will be called. Now if we go back and check after 2 seconds uh, whenever this element is added to the DOM we can see the result in the console like what exact element was added in the DOM. So, uh, but for some reason, let's assume that our library is uh, taking instead of 2 seconds, it's taking 4 seconds now, both for adding and removing the element from the DOM. Now, if we go to the browser and reload it, we see we are again getting null every single time. But uh, we don't want it. We, you have to use some other solution to fix it. So, set timeout doesn't work. So, what we can use something called polling. So, what polling is, we can use set interval to make periodic calls after every second to check if the anime name or the DOM element which we are looking for is added in the DOM or not. And uh, once this particular anime or the DOM element is added, we can clear the interval using clear interval. So what we are doing is we are capturing the name the DOM and then we are checking if it is added and if it is added we are clearing the interval also called polling. So uh, if we go back to the browser and check and reload the page, we can see as soon as the element is displayed in the DOM, we can see the result in the console that this particular element was added to the DOM. Now to check everything again, if our API or is taking 4 seconds again for some reason, maybe for slowness or for any other reason and we go back and we check, now it's still working. Because even uh, after 4 seconds, whenever the DOM element is added, we can, we are getting the result. Because after every single second, we are making a call to check whether the element is added or not using set interval. So using polling does solve our problem here, but is not a very efficient way and can lead to poor performance. Mainly because we are calling every single second to check whether the DOM element is added to the parent or not which is not a very good good way. This is a perfect condition to use mutation observer in our app. So we'll create a mutation observer instance as we shown uh, as we seen earlier and we pass it a callback function. So this callback function will be called every single time whenever new DOM element is added to the DOM. Then we'll use the observe method 
but before that we'll get this uh, anime this parent element or this animes in inside which this uh, new dog element is going to be added we'll pass child list true as an argument because uh, uh, we are looking uh, if any child node is added to the parent or not so if we go to the browser and refresh the page we can see all the mutations like uh, we see two here one for when the dom is added and the other when the dom is when the node is removed now instead of this normal console.log what we can do is uh, write some if conditions to get that particular condition or that particular mutation that has occurred so we can write mutation dot remove node dot length to check if uh, any new, any node is removed from the dom or not here we'll just console dot log then in the curly brackets we can type removed then what we want is the removed node so we can write mutation dot remove nodes at zero index to get that particular node we want to do the similar thing if any node is added as well so we can write if and we can type mutation dot added nodes dot length and in this particular condition we want to print what element is added in the dom so we'll write console log added then we'll type mutation dot added nodes at zero index so now if we save this format the changes just to make it look better if we go back to the browser and refresh here we can see what exact element was added and what exact element was removed from the dom so you can see whatever element is added we can see it is added and removed from the dom let's also check the uh, condition that we were uh, checking previously like uh, if for any reason our api is taking let's say five seconds now instead of two seconds what will happen in this particular case instead of four let's take five for both cases for adding and removing and if we go back to our browser and refresh the page you can see it's still working uh, we will get the exact added node and the remove node whenever it is added or removed from the DOM. Let's see one more example. We have four boxes, square boxes and in a container. And I want to know when a certain box is added or removed from the container. So for starting, what we can do, we can replace our animes, the animes class with the parent class. Because now we want to look, we want to look for the parent like the for the whole section now and we will also provide an option called subtree as true to specify that we are not just observing for the target but also for the target's descendants as well now we can just write parent dot children zero dot children zero dot remove to remove a node or one box from the container and if we refresh the page we can see this uh, in the console that this is the particular div that was just removed from the DOM so as you can see this div name this box one was removed from the DOM now let's say we also want to check if any attributes are changed so for that we also need to provide one more observer option called attributes as true to observe for any change in the attributes in the parent now what we can do is parent dot id as new id anything you want and if we go back to the change uh, this callback function we need to add one more condition as mutation dot type equals to or equals equals to as attributes to check if any attribute has been modified we can write console dot log then we can type uh, the sorry the capital T and uh, plus sorry instead of comma plus mutation dot attribute name to get the exact attribute which was modified and uh, specify in the other string this attribute was modified cool now if we go back to the browser and refresh oh sorry let me need to add spaces as well uh, before the attributes and after the okay yeah now if we refresh we can see that the id id attribute was modified somewhere in the parent so we can see the result in the console on refreshing the page that uh, this id 
or this particular attribute was modified from the parent so let's go one step further uh, you see here content editable as true for box 2 so if uh, we go to the browser and see let's say we want to check if any character in this box 2 was modified or not right now we cannot see because we haven't specified in the observer options so we go back to our observer option in our app.js and specify uh, the character data as true and the character old data as true to specify that we want to observe for the changes in the character value or the text value as well for that we will write uh, an if condition to check if any character is modified so we write mutation dot type is equal equal to character data and we will just console log right now we will just console log that uh, this uh, the character data was modified and uh, just this much for now and if we just push the semicolon now if we go back to our browser and then type again something in the box 2 we can see in the console that the character data was modified that was because we specified that we want to look for the character data as well now let's say uh, after two seconds we want to check if uh, something is added in the dom or not so for that we are specifying a set time out of three seconds and after that three second what we want to do is create a div and uh, add that class box to it because we have uh, added that class to every single box for the css for adding the css then we add a text node to it to that box 5 and specify the text as box 5 then we append that uh, newly created div to the parent now if we save these changes and uh, go to our browser and refresh the page we can see that this particular uh, box 1 was removed and this box 5 was added in the DOM as you can see this box 5 was added in the DOM okay so this was mutation observer in JavaScript hope you have learned something from this video we have looked into various scenarios like observe this kind various kinds of uh, changes in the DOM using mutation observer so thank you for watching